Hi, welcome to part two of the Timberline series. Here I'm going to show a little bit about the lead ballast. This is a standard ones we currently use that are inside the carbon barrels. They're different weights. They're a little bit too small, so we need to take up the full void inside here. As you can see, it's a bit of a rattle fit. We want to maximize the amount of mass. For that, we need to manufacture a new mold to increase the volume of that lead and increase the back portion of the uh, mushroom top lead mold. Um, and the bigger we make that, the more mass we add. So this will allow us to be much more critical. We can then turn that down to the right size. We're about to bore out the depth we require. In this case, it's going to be 70 millimeters. So to control that depth, We place a marker. Okay, so now I've completed the stem of the mushroom inside the mold. I'm now going to start working on the head of the mushroom. We need to increase that to 25 millimeter. We're at about 20 at the moment. We're setting the tool post travel at a one degree taper. That'll allow us to eject the lead easier. And so that's how we make our simple in-house lead molds. For those of you interested, this is how we make our carbon barrel. The same barrel we use in our carbon pipe guns and also the interior section of our timberline guns. Okay, you guys saw me turning the mold for the lead. This is what it turns out like. A stand, a screw section, that's to help push out the lead once it's molded. We cast by throwing in the top, we throw in what we think is the right weight, turn it over, wind in the back, and out falls the muzzle weight, mushroom shaped. And that, as you can see, is in a varying size. These will then fit into the back of the muzzle and the barrel will slide over it. So it's exactly the correct fit and it'll fit in either or. Some of them more snug than others. And there you go. Quick evening of molding and we've got nearly 100 out. A common problem with some customers is when they go on a trip, they'll go out and purchase a heavy duty gun to shoot that trophy fish, but it's a gun they're not familiar with. With a timberline, everything, all the components are exactly the same as what they're used to with our conventional gun. So it's a pretty much seamless switch over in terms of feel, trigger pull, um, how the line works, reels work, everything is exactly the same. So this will make life a lot easier when you go on those trips to shoot that trophy fish. After the previous video, there were quite a few comments asking whether the Timberline was available in Roller as well. Yes, it is. Um, that was the primary reason for developing the Timberline was to make the shorter guns more buoyant. There's quite a few differences. The conventional Roller has two separate bands that hook onto anchors at the back. We can't have any anchor points along the barrel. Um, to drill a hole into the barrel will damage the uh, barrel and cause uh, flooding. With the timber gun though, on the roller version, we can add stainless steel hooks. There's two hooks set up in a specific way so the recoil doesn't allow it to bounce off. 
The first one is just the preload. It's only under slight tension. That's to help you when you load the gun that is not too powerful. You can also use a load assist or the conventional load grab holes. Once loaded, you can pull the rubber back to the rear hook. This adds the full power of the gun. If you're going to fire in a cave, you can leave it set on the middle hook. Well, there you have it. Now you've seen our new baby. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be showing you how to take care of it.